Alan, in this place of, uh, where we can see deep time, at least in a human sense, you've uh, uh, helped humanity understand what, what probably happened at the beginning of the universe. When you think about cosmology, from a, the standpoint of humanity, what are the implications? Well, uh, I don't know, it's frankly hard to say. Um, one of the things one, of course, learns from cosmology is how very small our whole civilization is. Uh, we live on a planet that's part of a galaxy with about 100 billion stars in the galaxy. Uh, the galaxy is about one in 100 billion galaxies in the visible part of the universe. And if this theory is called inflation is right, the <laughs> whole visible universe is perhaps a tiny speck in a vastly uh, larger uh, system. Um, what that means, I think, is certainly not that we're unimportant, but that it means we have to make our own importance, uh, that uh, man is important uh, because we're important to ourselves, because we give life a meaning. And I think part of that meaning is our quest for knowledge about the universe that we live in. Uh, and there, I think, one could say very optimistic things coming out of cosmology. It's really amazing, I think, uh, how far we've come in being able to understand the things that we see around us in the universe. You know, I think this is such a, a critical point, because on the one hand, we see ourselves an even smaller part of, of the vastness of reality, it, with, the, with inflation and the multiple pocket universes, maybe an infinite number. But on the other hand, we understand it. And That's if we right. understand it, after what? We, we've had a, you know, 400 years of science and a few thousand years of recorded history, a, 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 a drop in the ocean of time. We understand it, and you are able to talk very intelligently about what happened in the 10 to the minus 37th, the 35th second in the universe, and this is what humanity is doing. To me, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, no, I agree. It is incredible, although we should also be completely honest about this. Uh, there are some things we understand fantastically, surprisingly, I should say, well. Uh, we can make predictions for the cosmic background radiation, not only for its spectrum, but for the spectrum of perturbations that it shows us. Yeah. Uh, and they work. It's absolutely fantastic, I think. But at the same time, our model of the universe is in many ways more confused than ever. Um, about 70% of the universe, we think, is this stuff called dark energy, and we don't really know what that is. Another 25% is what we call dark matter. We don't know what that is either. But we know that uh, there is such a thing, is there, or there's something to be explained there, yes, which so is so far beyond our common intuition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, to me, that, that's, uh, yeah. that, that by itself is remarkable. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. I think it's remarkable on both sides. It's remarkable <laughs> how much we understand. It's also remarkable how much there is that we don't understand. And it's, uh, to me, it's remarkable uh, that we understand how much there is not to understand. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds like a joke, but it's not. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, uh, I hope you're right that we know what it is that we don't understand. Uh, there's a good chance you are. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, you know, as we look at cosmology, which, you know, I, I think in, it, it, if you go back 40 or 50 years, it was not looked upon as sort of core science. It was looked upon, if not philosophy, it was just not even core physics. But really today it is. And that it yeah, enables us right. to understand, I mean, it's really essential to, to what's going on. It's a, it's a major transformation. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. I think it's, it's driven largely by the fact that cosmology has now really become an observational science. Uh, there really are a, a number of experiments going on that are bringing back real data that can be compared with real theories. And cosmology really is being put on the same kind of footing as, as other sciences. Well, and, and also as, as particle and high energy physics uh, in accelerators was for several decades prior because uh, cosmology never had a way to kind of compete with that. Now you can <laughs> compete with that. Uh, that's right, that's right. Um, well, cosmology, I guess, came in vogue to particle physicists like myself. I really began as a particle physicist right. uh, because uh, we began to develop theories of behavior of elementary particles that really cannot be tested on mm -hmm. in terrestrial accelerators. The important consequences of these theories just happen at energies that are too high uh, to be reached by earthbound accelerators. So it turns out that the universe itself uh, is the only laboratory to which we have any access to which has ever reached those energies. Uh, and that was so the, the universe, early universe. Uh, that's the early universe, right. right. The first uh, you know, 10 to the minus 30th of a second of the history of the universe, uh, the temperatures were comparable to the temperature 
energies that are, are associated with grand unified theories and other ideas. Where all, where all the forces physics, come together. Where all the forces come together, exactly. Which is far, far in excess of anything we can produce with our accelerators on Earth. That's right, far, far. Uh, right. A cute calculation that you can do is you could uh, figure out how big an accelerator you'd have to yeah, build yeah. to reach these energies using conventional technology. How big? How big? And, and the answer turns out to be about 70 light years or so in length. <laughs> um, so I, I always like to say that I was surprised that neither NASA nor the Department of Energy really took an interest in this. <laughs> I thought they should, but it turns out to not be very practical. <laughs> yeah. is, is there uh, a danger because uh, quantum physics gives us a probability of events uh, happening and, and that the universe is a, is a one-time experiment, nobody's uh, doing it over and over again, uh, that, that the data that we get is, is somehow distorted because it's a, literally a one-time event in a probabilistic quantum mechanical world. Is, is there any danger that we're getting a skewed uh, uh, data point? Uh, well, I think the answer is there is, and, and cosmologists try to take that into account. Um, the fact that it's only a one-time experiment is not in itself a real killer, from at least from my point of view, although it's a little controversial, actually, in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, if the probability of something happening is 10 to the minus 6th, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a single event or the probability of getting a head 100,000 times in a row. Right, right. Uh, if the probability of something is very small, you expect it not to happen, <laughs> uh, whether it's one event or a sequence of many events. Uh, so... If our theories predict that something is very improbable, we should expect not to see it. And that's basically the way it works. Uh. Now, it is true that we make predictions. Of, we, I mentioned before the cosmic background radiation. Uh, there, it's also a fact that it's a one-time event uh, that what we get to measure. Uh, and in fact, people talk about the phrase that we use is cosmic variance, which means that if we measure it someplace else, we, we get a different result, yeah, yeah. Uh, which we're aware of. Uh, for most of the components that we're measuring, this cosmic variance is small. Uh, for some of the things that we're measuring, the cosmic variance that we calculate uh, is actually quite large, and it means that we can't learn too much from those measurements, uh, and there's no way around that. Oh, so, so you can actually take that, that probabilistic effect in, into account when you, That's when right. you look. That's right. That's right, because the theories themselves are predicting probabilities. Right, sure, sure. And where the theories predict that the probability uh, is overwhelming, that the answer should be between there and there, uh, then you're in good shape. Yeah. And the theory predicts that the probability is only a half that will be between there and there, hmm. uh, then you're not in such good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so uh, as we look as, at cosmology in the scope of science, uh, you know, the argument is that it, it, it doesn't uh, help with anything on Earth. But uh, I can't think of anything that gives us a, a more uh, a clear sense of, of what the, the, the real essence of, of our existence is than, than cosmology. And it, it's really the background on which everything else occurs. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. Certainly among different branches of science that I've been involved in, uh, cosmology is the one that I think catches everybody's imagination because we're all interested in where the universe came from, where we came from. Uh, throughout human history, every human group that has formed and organized itself into society has invented myths about how the universe began. Uh, it's something that human beings are concerned about. Uh, it's, it's in our, our nature, I think. Uh, and I think it's fascinating that, that modern cosmology as a science uh, is, I think, making very real progress in learning how all of this happened.